YouTube, I'm just gonna give you a fair warning. I am about to throw shade. Mad shade. If you don't like throwing the shade, click the X and leave. If not, if you like throwing shade, stay here and throw shade with me. So I'm here to bring you some don't believe the hype goodness. I love watching the tubes of you, the you of tubes. And on that, people talk about a lot of beauty products. I love watching about beauty products. People really just blow these beauty products up. Like they are end all be all mother of dragons. It's just going to win Westeros for me. I'm just gonna get everything I want and more from these beauty products. And this just isn't a products I regret buying video because some of these products I really enjoy. To be honest, it's just, they don't deserve the crapola of attention that they get. Some of these products are just so overhyped that I was, and I liked the results I got, but it was such a letdown when I got it because people just talked about it so much and how great it was that I was just expect, expecting holy grail or better. So I'm here to bring you a couple of those just so to give you a heads up don't be expecting the world and more from certain products. Ugh, first and foremost, and I really like this product, but hourglass powders. This palette is beautiful and I like using it. This was $80. I got it for like 30 because I had a million coupons for Ulta. And it's really pretty. The powders are just so subtle and beautiful, but that's the problem. The book just landed on me. <laughs> It's a snook bug. He's right there, you see him? Beetle. There's literally a beetle behind me. Oh well. It's subtle and pretty. It's not changing my life. You know what I mean? And for 80 bucks, first of all, these are teeny, teeny, tiny. And that was like the big hoopla around when this came out because I remember when I saw this was coming out and I had to have it because I don't have any hourglass powders and everybody just talks so much about them and I needed it and I saw this was six and in the promotions it looked like they were regular sized powders but they were not. They were tiny. I remember that was a big deal. It's just not worth $80 and all the rest of their products are so expensive but they're so subtle. You know what I'm saying? Next is another product that has just started to get recently the amount of hate. When this first came out, they were like overhyped, but now it's starting to get hate. And it deserves it. These are the worst. They are the absolute worst. It's so funny because we had these and then they went overseas and everyone was like, are you serious, Americans? Like, what the hell? These are terrible. If you want, if your lips are dry and you put these on it, your lips are going to be drier. This is just a greasy ball of good smelling goodness that I want to eat, but just absolutely nothing for my lips. Who these are bad. There's even a lawsuit against them for like burning people's lips. Problem is, is I still buy them in different colors. Why? They're horrible. Stop telling me I need them. Reformulate EOS because they're making so much money off of a terrible product just because it's cute. I'm literally addicted to them for their cuteness. Put me out of my misery. On the train of lip balms, this is a Burt's Bees lip balm. I peeled the thing off at work because I was bored as hell. I'm talking about the original lip balm. Holy hell, Hades and everyone help you if you put this on your lips when they're actually chapped. The pain you feel when you put this on, I mean sure, when your lips aren't chapped, it gives you that like minty, tingly feel. When your lips are chapped, you may as well just take a goddamn torch to your lips with these because there goes the beetle. Just see it? Bye beetle. Come on, we have to live in harmony. I don't want to crush him. You can't have my coffee. How are you going to take flight? I don't mind you when you're staying down. I will bat you away though if you're going to fly around. But yeah, if you want the hellfire on your lips, Put this on where it's chapped. Now like the pink grapefruit one was in my favorites. I really like that one because it's not burny. It's just like a nice lip balm. Something else that gets so much hype that I use, but why? The NYX pencil lip liners. These are said to be dupes for the MAC lip liners and if they are, the MAC lip liners suck and I would never pay that much for them. These are like so, do you see that? It's just dry and putting it on your lips, it's like, any moisture that was on your lips will be drug away with the stamp pencil. And I know it's meant to just line your lips and, you know, you put a lipstick on top to even it out, but it 
hurts. It hurts to put this product on my lips. I'm literally tugging away. It's like when your parents used to get you the Rose Art crayons instead of the Crayola crayons. That's right, cat. Get alert. There's a beetle. Get it. Sicking my cat on the mission. He'll get him. I don't even want him to die. I'll get him, but I don't want to get out of focus. Is that weird? This wasn't a favorite video of mine. Why? This is not primer water. What are the ingredients in this? They don't even say what's in it because you know what's in it? Water. What does this do? Like, I will try to put it on before my makeup. I don't really notice the difference. When my makeup is like feeling really dry and cakey, I'll spray it on to like revitalize it, but then I feel like it just still looks cakey. I feel like I'm just using this because I bought it and I have to atone for my sins. And I bought it because it was so hyped up. Shame on me. Shame. 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 Sorry for all the Game of Thrones reference if you don't watch it. And I like this product because I love this brand. But it kind of sucks and I didn't really, I kind of thought it and I didn't really realize it until the Matte X collection, but the regular matte lippy sticks by ColourPop are kind of cruddy. Like, they're super pigmented, but they're also like, in my opinion, really drying. They really accentuate poop on your lips. I, I, I like them because I just love ColourPop so much that I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. And I love the colors and I love how fine tipped it is so it's so easy. You don't really need a lip liner. Well, let's just call out the matte collection. It's drying, okay? The matte X collection is fabulous. The new matte X collection. Awesome, 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 awesome. The matte collection, they smell real good, but they ain't real good. I have like every single one of these and whenever a limited edition one comes out, I get it because they do. They do last a really long time, but can we stop saying how amazing the wet and wild lipsticks are. It's the ones that are $1.99. These are so, so difficult to work with. Also, so, like that's how it swatches in a swatch. Like unless you press down really hard. They're matte, but they're so dry. Like, can we talk about how dry they are? Like come out of your hobbit holes and stop hiding and let's talk about how dry and poop these are. But these never look even on my lips. They take like 10 hours to put on unless I put them on with a lip brush because first of all, the big giant like applicator, it's like impossible to get all the way on. They're really dry and everybody like blows smoke up their asses. These don't really have asses, but let's pretend about how great they are and they're not. But I'm still gonna buy them because I'm sick in the head. On the drive train and I'm about to get a lot of hate. And I've heard that they've been reformulated, but the MAC matte lipsticks may be the worst matte lipsticks on the planet. This is Russian red. I don't know why I keep pulling reds, but like they're so hard to work with. Am I the only one who thinks? And I know I heard that they've been reformulated, but they are just, everybody loves this for the packaging. Let's be honest. Everybody loves MAC lipsticks for the packaging. The MAC collection sucks. Let's just talk about it. Let's just say it. Let's just be real. It's not great. I have a couple and I use them, but everybody just talks so highly of them. And Russian Red, which is like one of the most popular colors, is just so dry. And they're so hard to work with and even put on your lips, but no one will talk about it because everybody just loves that little bullet packaging. I'm gonna get so much hate for this video, but why is everyone obsessed with MAC eyeshadows? MAC eyeshadow, beautiful. Like, it's not even suit. Okay, I just swatched it, there it is. See that swatch? This is such a pretty color. Okay, let's let's swatch it again. Are you serious? Like that's it? That's all I'm gonna get? And yeah, I get when these were like super popular back in the day when it was like the brand to have. But now between like ColourPop, even the ColourPop is so much better than these. And you know, Urban Decay, Too Faced are better. The shadow quality is just better. I don't really get it. I mean, I do. I. <laughs> That's another thing that I like the luxury of MAC. I like the message. I like the rebelliousness. I like the colors. I love going into the next store and I still like buying MAC products. I especially really like their blushes, but maybe I just need to try more eyeshadows, but I was just so turned off. Like if I can't get this to show up on my arm with a finger swatch, how is it gonna show up with a brush? Here comes more hate. I like these, okay? However, they're so powdery. I feel like the pigment 
is not as great as everybody makes it out to be, but the Lorac eyeshadows, so powdery, so easily blended away and wiped away. I think the unzipped palettes have a better formula. And even some of the um, holiday collections have a different formula. But like the regular pro shadows, and I have the mega pros. I like to use them, but I feel like every time I use a Lorac eyeshadow palette, it's a subtle, super overblended, boring look. Like they don't have really any shadows that really shock me. And when I see it, I'm like, wow, I really want to use that. The fallout is terrible so powdery and even with the mega pros I just feel like every look is so lacking I just don't get the hype and like so many people look are like this is my favorite eyeshadow palette ever and I've used it like look at it and I've even smashed the mirror I've had it for a while I can't even explain it they're just lacking something for me every single Maybelline mascara I have tried so many these are just two on hand I've never been happy with a Maybelline mascara. They always come in pretty and bright colored packaging that I always want and I always want to try and I'm always just disappointed. They do nothing for my lashes. They're always, I hate their brushes. I'm like why do I still fall into this Maybelline freaking trap of mascaras? And every single time I see it, I'm like, wow, like that's something special. But it's not, they suck, they really do. Always. I've never liked one. Stop buying them, eh? Something that I used to really love, but now I realize drives me kind of nuts, is the Fishism's Formula Eye Booster Eyeliner. Why? It's probably going to show up super black right now, but it's not even that black. I feel like it's... I love the brush tip, but I feel like it can be difficult to work with at times. It's kind of not very black. It's not as black as I want it to be. It doesn't dry matte, it dries shiny, and I really like matte eyeliner. And I just feel like I'll do my flick, helicopter coming, and I'll go to fill it in, like the other side, and it takes forever. It's just so liquidy and doesn't really work as well as I want it to. Another thing that was super hyped and I was looking for forever, I was so severely disappointed in, and that is the Jessie's Girl Liquid Eyeliner. Everybody on YouTube talked about this, and I kept searching and searching, and then I finally saw it again, and I was like, yes, this is finally my time, I've been looking for you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful brush tip. Black, pigmented. It's already bleeding, look. See it bleeding out onto my lines? That's annoying. I wore this twice. One time was to work and every time I went into the bathroom, I had eyeliner up here, like big dots. Dots like that big, like that big up here. But everybody talked so highly, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give this another chance. So on a spring day, I was walking around Chestnut Hill with a friend, we were having a good old time at McNally's and I went downstairs and when I drank, first of all, I have to pee about 80 times, lo and behold, I go down to the bathroom, because McNally's weird bathroom is through the creepy basement, if you've ever been to Philly area, and I had the freaking dots. And I was like, oh, I'm wiping them away. I'm like, God damn it. Go back down to the bathroom again. The dots were there again. This is literally 10 minutes later. Every time I went down to that bathroom, I had it a line up here. I had it everywhere. It was horrible. I will never use this again, because why do I want a product that does that? Like, cool, it's cheap. NYC is $2.99 and I've never had to do that to me, ever, ever. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, a lot of these products I actually like enjoy and they're in my routine, but they're just not worth the crapola fan base that they get of just, oh my God, the most amazing thing ever, holy grail. In my opinion, if you love these products, let me know. Um, if there's any other products that you guys wanna tell me that don't go and get and believe the hype and spend a million dollars on, also let me know. I love being told to save money and I love being told to see things past what every other YouTube's YouTuber is telling me to get. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome week.